Spin and make it. Hold tight. Yes, there is sound. We're not talking. <laughs> 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 Greetings. It's Monday. So we are ready to talk to you, right? <laughs> Black Love Live, Mon Show, <laughs> Edu, and, and Nawasha. Nawasha Edu. Yes. The Mighty Mighty, a Coma House initiative, culturally based counseling and consulting, and Black Love Superheroes here tonight to break down some art and science of Black Love culture. <laughs> so tonight we are talking about seven things that are not love in an intimate relationship. So we want to greet some of our friends. Uh, we see Khadija. Carlene Thomas, Enid Dublin, Jamila Thompson Diallo, Gandhi, GPS, what's up, my brother, <laughs> the poet extraordinaire. And of course we want to know first what you think love is or what it's not. Just drop that in the comments. And also this month, um, this week, we are starting with Black Love School. So our first class is actually going to be what is love. So we thought we would talk about some of the things that people say um, when they're describing their situation that is not love. So um, this is a precursor. If you want to check out Shay the school, Hooker. you Peace can Queen. go to uh, the bit.ly link. Update. It is bit.ly slash and then Black Love School. Capital B, capital L, capital S. So. Hey, my cousin, Nicole Brinkley. What's up? Love you, girl. <clears throat> Let's start with, who's going first? Me or you? Um, I'll go first. Okay. So what we're talking about is um, some of the things that are not love in a relationship. So um, there is obviously way more than seven things we could put <laughs> in this um, list, but we just wanted to talk about seven things that came to us over the last couple of the big ones yeah yeah over the last couple of days so number one thing so we got a list of seven the number one thing that is not love in an intimate relationship is brrr, a lack of purpose mm. um not having any purpose not knowing um not having goals not having hey, relationship Sam. goals not um not having a um conscious direction of what we're doing or why we're even together. Jackson Round, one love, peace, beloved. Um, so not having that in a relationship is definitely um, the foundation of a relationship. And when you don't have that, you, you know, you, you're probably wasting your time or you're probably using the relationship um, ill-advisedly or you're being used in a relationship. <laughs> one or the so other. One or the other is, <laughs> is usually going on when there's no purpose. So like a, a agency or a company, when you come here and you say, oh, what do y'all do here? Or, you know, what's your mission statement? Um, we talk about that in the Coma Day book. Every relationship should have a mission statement. It should be a, a one sentence, a clear purpose that is a combination of each partner. Right. And so just like when you come to a fast food place or an auto mechanic or whatever, you know what they do there um, in your relationship. You should know what it's about when you don't. You don't have purpose. And, you know, for certain, your relationship is in trouble. Yes. So. And another thing. So this is the second thing Number is um, just being imbalanced. So if you find yourself in a relationship that is not balanced, it is not love. So a lot of times, you know, Masha and I were talking, you know, some people find themselves always giving. <laughs> Other people find themselves always receiving or looking to receive. And that is just, we're talking about reciprocity is love. So of course, reciprocity at the, um, the greatest good and highest vibration, not just giving tit for tat back and forth with the negativity, but really having balanced communication, balanced support, balance in finances and of course this does not mean 50 50 mm -hmm. um, because we always say you have to give 100 100 so we're talking about balance and that you're complementing each other and that you do what is necessary to bring balance so sometimes one person might be more talkative if they are looking to support someone and saying how can i help you um, someone might be you know 
contributing more time or more financial means because that is what's called for in the relationship. But it's a matter of are you looking to bring balance? So of course we use ma'at all the time or the idea of the scales. Uh, there are times when one side is heavy, so that means you have to add something heavy to the other side. <laughs> so it's not a matter of, oh, I did this, I'm waiting for the person to do the same thing for me. But it's really about, let me give my full self so that the best can come to the relationship. Right. And we talk about that a lot in that the relationship is its own third thing right. that needs to be nurtured, just like a person needs to be fed, needs to be entertained, needs to be taken care of. That's what you're really thinking about when you're saying, is this relationship balanced? Do I feel that I am ever poured into? Do I feel like I am listened to and understood? And this goes for all relationships. So even if you're like at work, even if you have a, a good friend, do you find that you're, so, that you're the one who's always supporting your friend and that it's not reciprocal? That's not, that's not love. And of course, you don't have to um, dump the relationship. <laughs> you just need to draw yeah, attention to the fact that it's not balanced. So you can say, hey, you know, this is how I feel right now. Um, I feel like I'm not being supported. And then also say how you want the support. Because a lot of times the first thing that someone will do is give you what they want. And that might not be what you're looking for. So really just having the maturity to recognize it's imbalanced and then also the means to bring balance. That's a good point because a lot of times where the challenge or the struggle is in a relationship is the opportunity for character development mm. and people bail on it. They end the relationship until they get in another relationship and then start having similar problems right. and then they end that relationship and then it becomes a perpetual cycle and then they're self-delusional saying, I don't deal with drama so I keep drama out of my life but in fact what you're doing is limiting your own character development because you're refusing to actually correct some of the ills versus just bounce on them. So, you know, get off of that, get off of that. So number three in the seven things that are not love in an uh -oh. intimate relationship is low vibrational sex. And what is low vibrational sex? It is purposeless sex. It is unnatural sex. It is sex that is uh, manipulated. It is sex that is um, um, one-sided in terms of gratification, imbalanced. It is sex that is um, um, not harmonious, not, it's yeah. aggressive and... and um, if you're holding it over someone's head, and yeah, it's, it's, manipulative, it's, you said it's, that. It's, so. it's a sex that is cheapening the act of the physical act of love. Sex, from a cultural standpoint, is the highest form of communication in the universe. And it, it incorporates all of the senses, all of the elements, all of the, um, the composite of your values, your beliefs, your symbols. Um, and your senses so to cheapen that um, and we all are guilty of it at sometimes because it takes a certain focus and a certain um, intentional um, unity <laughs> to have what we call going to the top of the pyramid but in the black love school we'll get into um, holistic sex and intimacy um, we deal with that in the summer the heat of love so um but number three, seven things that are not love in an intimate relationship is low vibrational sex. And that even goes for casual sex, not just casual sex outside of a relationship, an intimate relationship. But many people in intimate relationships have casual sex and they're not aware of that. So we'll deal with that also. So yes. number four. Number four is, is love is not emotionally immature. <laughs> so now this right. goes back to being you know, manipulative or not owning who you are as a person. And I think a lot of times the immaturity comes in because we are looking to put our best face forward, which is a good thing. It's, right. it's honorable on one end, but the other part about being in a relationship is that it is for your character development. So it's great to be aware of yourself and what you really need in order to bring harmony and balance to yourself. That's part of finding your soulmate. Uh, we, we use the acronym SOUL, 
which is self, others, understanding, and love, you have to know yourself. So part of the emotional immaturity is that we don't know and honor and respect ourselves. So when someone pulls something up out of us <laughs> that needs harmonizing, we can be turned into toddlers about it. And in the relationship, we can be mean, we can um, you know, put a person down, we can be dismissive, and it's really just because we're kind of all wearing a mask in order to court, even sometimes inside of the relationship, you're wearing a mask and not being your true self. So the person can't meet you vibrationally. Right. So we're talking about complementary energy. If I am not myself, then my compliment, my real compliment cannot come to me. But I'm always going to be attracting something. So if I'm in a relationship and I'm being immature yeah, well, and I'm being um, spiteful, hey, Carice. 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 Peace. <laughs> if I'm just doing something to be petty, when I'm, you know, sometimes people are promoting the fact that they're petty, that's emotional immaturity. <laughs> if you're on the petty squad and you're saying that you're queen of the petty or king of yeah. the petty because goodness knows men are petty also. <laughs> if you're doing that, that's immature. You know, so as adults entering in relationships, that is not love to be immature. Right. We really need to honor the sacredness and spiritual aspect of a relationship and love. And that would not be, you know, promoting our immaturity. So that's, yeah. again, looking at self and, you know, being aware of who you are and trusting that who you are really is enough to draw out of the almost two billion people <laughs> you can draw a core group of friends. You can draw a soulmate, being your authentic self. Right. Peace, Carl Tone Jones, Yara Riddy, Sutherland Pollock, Carice Derry Quinney. We love y'all. Much peace. <laughs> so, um, number five, five in the seven things that are not love in an intimate relationship is um, confusion about commitment. And, you know, not knowing where we're going, not knowing what the boundaries of the relationship are, not knowing the definition of the relationship. You would be surprised how um, to know how many people who come to us in a couple and they have different understandings about what their relationship is. Simitawi Tepi Ra, Hotep Queen. Um, so that is... You know, that's number five. That's that's really important because that, that kind of lends back to and goes back to purpose. When you have purpose in your relationship, within the purpose, within the mission statement is not only the value system, but it's the intention and it's the parameters of the, the um, relationship. And so you're never confused about um, your commitment when you have purpose. But a lot of people out here on some, you know, on some self-style stuff. And oftentimes the man and woman have a very, very different um, opinion of what their relationship is. So many times when we do couples uh, work, we do cross gender stuff where the four of us will work together. Then Nawasha might work with the man and then I work with the woman and then we switch where I'll work with the man and then Nawasha will work with the woman. And a lot of times the brother, when I finally get, when we, when me and him get together, he like, man, I, you know, I'm somewhere else in this relationship. I, I you know, I came to this because she said whatever, you know, um, I, I, I've seen that sometimes. And, and, you know, a part of his um, emotional immaturity, as Nawasha was saying, the last point is, is that. I think the biggest sign that I see of emotional immaturity and how it leads into confusion about commitment is people can't cope with dissatisfaction or disappointment. And so th that, that ability to cope with dissatisfaction, rejection, or disappointment um, nurtures, uh, um, begins to spark, I, I won't say it nurtures, but it begins to spark and emotional immaturity because anytime you see somebody emotionally immature they just don't know how to cope with something so um yeah so that's 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 number five confusion about commitment 
out of the seven things that are like And more. number six, let me do a recap. Number one was lack of purpose. Number two was imbalance. Number three was low vibration sex. Number four was emotional immaturity. Number five was confusion and commitment. And now number six is stagnant, <laughs> stagnant activity. So love is not stagnant. The idea right. about love is that you are nurturing something, right? So you're ideally you're nurturing Jessica. Um, growth and the highest Marie. vibration with the understanding that the love is cultivating your character. So, you know, um, yesterday a lot of people were talking about Mother's Day and, you know, that loving relationship, whether you had a loving mother or you felt a maybe like a, a, a fracture in that mother-child relationship, the focus was, as we do with holidays, all of our minds are on the same thing. So it's in stores, it's you know on the internet now, it's on TV, it's everywhere. So you're kind of thinking about the archetype of the mother. The idea that your relationship is not going somewhere is not love. You know, So if you want your relationship to go somewhere, whether it's with a parent, whether it's with a child, whether it's the intimate relationship, and you want to put in the effort, and the other person is not meeting you, then you have to draw boundaries and be able to say that I'm looking to grow. You know, the highest form of living is life forward and growing and appreciating all the things that are life forward. That's why we have to honor how Green. we're eating. We have to honor, Jackie. you know, our, our rhythms in relationship. We have to honor our positions. So if you are a parent, you have to understand the job, understand that you're guiding with the unconditional love. If you're in an intimate relationship, you have to do the same thing. So if you feel that you are not going anywhere, <laughs> that is not love. And again, it's a call for you to um, just acknowledge it in yourself first, because it, a lot of times, just like we were talking about with some of the other categories, when we say, this isn't going anywhere, it's over, you know, like, the idea is to recognize it early. <laughs> Say, hey, I'm feeling like we're in stagnant waters right now. So it is time to add some variety, add some adventure. Maybe we've met a lot of our goals and we need new ones. And, and really see what it is that is missing or keeping you from moving and keeping you from growing. Because it's always starting with yourself. So sometimes we, it's easy to look out of our eyes and look at the other person and be like, it's all your fault <laughs> that we're not going anywhere. But if you are moving, someone's going to keep up with you or you're going to be you're going to end up with new people anyway. Right. So the focus is not on the other person. The focus is really on you. And I think that sometimes as mothers and as fathers, we notice growth in our children's relationships because they're hitting different um, markers Milestones, all the time. Right. So we're like, hey, you did this and hey, you did this or we're planning even and we're helping them and come into the next phase and saying, hey, this is how you're going to grow. You're going to, you know, get a um, job or get an internship or get your driver's license or go to college or, you know, talk <laughs> or walk. It could be anything. But we're aware of it because we've already passed their stage with your peer relationship. Sometimes it's difficult because when you're courting, the goal could just be to be committed. Then when you're committed, the goal could be, hey, we're living together or we're going or dating, you know, in this phase where we're mated in this phase. And before you know it, you can get into a lull. And it's really for you to say, what are my new goals right now? What are our goals? So, you know, what is a goal that I can support you with? What's a goal that I need support with? Then what, are, what are, is our goal that we could work on so that we are growing and we're looking to not be stagnant. We're looking to expand and contribute, which are the higher, um, I'm saying higher, the more spiritual or the outside of yourself needs that you're meeting. And so that's why love requires a community. And that's what we're offering with the Black Love School. The link is in the video. Um, it's bit.ly, B-I-T slash forward slash L-Y um, dot Black Love <laughs> no School. Dot, oh, slash. no. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> we're going to type it in. Yeah, we, we're we typing type it, it in? in. Yeah. But that's very important because it's too much trying to do the love understanding by yourself and the point you made about watching your peers is really where we get messed up because the value systems that we're holding on to have been projected on us and they don't really serve us as a group 
And I'm telling you, one way you can tell that if what you're doing is um, good in your relationship is that if it serves the group. If it's, if it's good for the group, it's good for your relationship. If it ain't good for the group, it's probably not good for your <laughs> relationship. So that's just, that's just why community is so important. And the other reason is so that everybody can see the baton. You made an excellent point about the fact that we can see growth in our children because we've, we've passed them and we've lapped them in life development. But sometimes in our peers, we can't see growth. And the reason why is because we don't have elders integrated into the community. And so you need that baton passed through from the 150-year-old right. person all the way down to the 15-day-old year, the 15 day old person. We need a collective. And without that collective, we tend to get lost. Even when we mean well, we will get lost and do some wild shit mm -hmm. that, that, that ends up hurting our own selves. So, you and know, also, that's very but, um, important. Building the community around other people who are successful. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I mean. That's another thing. So yeah. not only in like eldership or age, literally, but the eldership of position. Yeah. So, you know, we're saying, hey, you know, we want to help cultivate a community of true love and, you know, culturally relevant understanding and all the things that we should have learned <laughs> when we were younger to prepare us for relationships. So we're saying that's what we do and we are successful working. with ourselves and successful with right. others and we want to help build a community around love and the, and the true understanding and purpose of love. So we're saying, you know, we're starting Black Love School and we really want to have a positive community based on healthy relationships. I think that sometimes when you do have a goal, you need to insert yourself into a certain community and that it can be difficult for adults sometimes. You're like relearning how to so-called network, but how to make friends compared to when you were like seven and you just right. said, hey, you want to be my friend for the next three hours <laughs> while we're on the playground? My daughters do it all the time. It's like, what's your name? Okay, my name is Saiwa. What's your name? Okay, we're playing now. We're in this game. Right. We're doing something that, I, that I'm going to meet my goal of being out here. And I think that sometimes that's what we need to recognize. So whatever the relationship is, if you feel like you're getting stagnant, take a look at yourself first and then ask yourself, what is even my goal here? Because we can get distracted by just moving to a new person as though that represents a whole bunch of newness right. that makes a new goal, but then right. soon that relationship will be stagnant. Right. And I, you know, also to, about that point <laughs> to close out the stagnant activity is just in a couple, you know, uh, you know on a practical level, um, that, that was a, a very elevated understanding of um, stagnant activity. But on yeah. a practical level, <laughs> right. you know, what like, are you like doing? what you're doing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. stop doing the same stuff, even in your house, for those yeah. who live together. Cook something so, new. So we have the 52 Date Night Challenge that really talks about how to date in your house. Um, it takes some creativity. It takes some effort. But the rewards are plentiful, you know what I'm saying? You could really, you know, um, get to a deeper level of intimacy just by serving and surprising one another, doing a board game, a foot rub, a massage, uh, watching a movie, um, spend date night fixing, doing a repair. It's all kinds of things you could do in your house. But then when you talk about getting outside, I think every year in your relationship, you should pick up a new activity, chess, um, you know, horse riding, horseback riding, whatever, wherever you're at, whatever you're into, you know, I don't want to project too much, but whatever you into, you should, as, as two people, you should be, um, you know, adding activity, you know, new activity to your relationship. Yeah, and that starts with yourself level. again, because you have to know what you're into. And right. sometimes when you feel that stagnant energy, you don't know what it, you even like anymore. You know, you kind right. of like... Um, you lose your way. Yeah, I saw a piece of uh, the Red Table Talk where they were talking about loss. And they said, what is your greatest loss? So Jada Pinkett was like, I realized when the producer asked me the question that my greatest loss was myself. <laughs> After I had been married and I had been in this industry and I had been a mother. And for like 20 years, she was like, I, I said, "How I like fashion. But what do I really want to wear? Not saying that someone's going to judge me, not saying that some stylist put it on, but what is my style even? I don't even remember. And right. recognizing that, I think it happens to women sometimes more often in the task managership 
of children and, and running a household and stuff like that. But really just being able to know, I feel stagnant. Let me spend two minutes with myself and figure out what makes me happy, what would bring me some joy, what have I always wanted to do that I haven't done yet? Because there's a million things. We're just not going to do it all, right? We were joking about the um, intro to The Lion King <laughs> and the little song that says there's more to see than can ever be seen, more to do than can ever be done. That is so true. But a lot of times we find ourselves watching the same TV show that everybody else is watching, right. um, cooking the same five meals that every that you've just been cooking. You don't even go down different aisles in the in the supermarket or go to a different <laughs> store. We just end up saying this is Get what's out safe that supermarket. <laughs> and this is what is what I've always done. And that energy, a little bit of newness in one area. We're fortunate that we can go to a community college, go to, you know, libraries. There's a lot to do. We're in an urban environment. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of free stuff. But you and know, I'm just saying, depends on where you are, yeah. there's always something. So we yeah. are very fortunate that it's not difficult. If we want to do something tomorrow, we could find it. But the idea is do what you can do and base it on what are you really interested in already or what is going to inspire you. What, because you create yourself new cycle after cycle also. So what you were into, um, I know what I, I'm into some of the same things when Mancho met me almost 20 years ago, but then some stuff is just new. <laughs> I'm like, I'm on this now. So there's a part of rolling with a person and, and you know, wanting to have movement. You know, Masha always says that men want some element to stay the same and women want some element to change. And I really think that that's true. So keeping that in mind, what do you want to stay the same has to be core values, you know what I mean, and some practices. But what do you want to grow and move? You cannot have a relationship where everything stays exactly the same. Right. Because you would be bored and you will terminate the relationship one way or another. You're going to sabotage right. it, <laughs> end it up front. Everyone wants to grow. Everything wants to grow that's right. living out here. Right. That's and last excellent. but not excellent, least. Excellent point. So um, for all those just joining, we are doing the seven things that are not love in an intimate relationship. Yes. These are things that you may be experiencing in your relationship and many of us have experienced at different times, but they do not represent what love is. And to find out what love is, <laughs> join us this week as the official opening of the Black Love School begins. And we want to thank all of those people, all the women <laughs> who have signed up. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but, um, so we said, number one was lack of purpose, no particular order. Number two, imbalance, um, whether it be in your communication, your understanding, whatever. Number three, low vibrational sex. Number four, emotional immaturity. Um, the thing that I see a lot in the um, counseling sessions that we're doing from men and women alike um, number five was confusion about commitment. Like, yo, what are we doing right now? What is this? You know, um, that's how they say it, right? So what is this that we're doing? <laughs> um, stag number six was stagnant activity, um, meaning that Nawasha gave a very beautiful understanding of a higher level of stagnation. And I said that on a practical level, just the stuff you do. You can, you, you can add... Audit. That's um, what we say about yeah, check your, you can check your day, add, check your week. Um, um, a level of creativity to your relationship, whether you in the house, whether you out of the house, in your community or whatever. In my, I think it was my eighth grade English class or ninth grade English. No, I might have been even tenth grade English class. I had an English teacher, really, really big dude. Um, he was huge, like maybe like 600 pounds, wow. but he was an actor <clears throat> um, and he was also a teacher. He was in a couple of movies. I remember he was in this movie called Turk 182. Um, but he passed away shortly after I graduated high school. But, you know, um, he, he chose me to go in this writing class. He really liked my writing. But anyway, we talked. And he said something that he put on the, bo on the wall. Boring people are easily bored. <laughs> Every time you meet a person who's always talking about bo um, they're bored, they're boring. And never forget that. So, um... I always remember that. I only remember the cat's name, but I see Kelly Lynn Bowser. What's up? She's, <laughs> she's from back in that time, um, so she may know. But in any event, 
So those were the six. Number seven, and um, we could have put a lot of things in this list, but we had to put this one in. It's kind of obvious. Um, the seventh thing that is not love in a relationship is any type of verbal or physical abuse. Um, and there's a distinction between uncomfortability, hurt, hurtful experiences, and abuse. So something that makes you uncomfortable is just a thing that is not pleasing to you. Something that is hurtful can be any thought, words, or action, deeds by your partner or yourself that actually causes you emotional pain. And some of those things happen um, over and over and over. But that's not abuse either. The distinction about abuse is the willful intent. I am striving to hurt you with what I'm saying and doing. Now, I may be doing that because it's my coping mechanism and I don't know how to defend my own feelings. Or it could be some other malicious, you know, you dealing with a nutcase. And somebody is just bugging out and gaining pleasure. You know, they may be getting their sense of significance by putting you down or hurting you. Regardless of where it's coming from, that's the distinction. So a lot of times when we see uncomfortability or hurt feelings, people try to say it's abuse. And that's not always the case because you could have a partner who's repeatedly hurting your feelings just because they have a coping deficit or they have a skill set deficit in terms of communication or something else and they don't really know how to kick it to you about a thing so what they do or say is hurtful to you. That's not abuse though. Abuse is when somebody is willfully, intently trying to crush you. And you know now, when it's physical abuse, you, you, you obviously know that because they not hitting you in a way that you know you don't want to be here. I know some people's into getting hit in other, in other ways, but you know I'm not. I don't. I don't. Even, you know that's a whole other story. But where that comes from, why you like, why you find pleasure in being beat, is a whole other thing. But but you don't want to when somebody um, hit you. You, know you don't want to take abuse as a show of your love. Right. You know, so there's not the, you know, the more abuse I can take, the more I'm loving this person, you know, so you have to be careful to draw that boundary quick. If someone is emotionally attempting to hurt you, verbally attempting to hurt you, physically hurting you, then you have to say, this is not love. And I am not, I can't love you out of being an abuser. And that's what we have to make sure that we understand. Right. That <clears throat> is the draw the line. I need to be in a safe place. So overall, when we get into the, the class that we're going to do this week of what love is, some of the basic things are it should be safe. <laughs> it should be right. welcoming. It should be right. sacred. So be all of these other things that right. we're talking about, and you can let us know if you ever, you know, you know, half anonymously, you don't have to talk about anybody, but if you ever ended a relationship or you ever recovered from one of these things, I don't know if you can really recover from the willful intent to uh, hurt someone, to abuse someone. Perhaps that person can grow, you know what I'm saying, and become more mature for their next relationship. But I think it's very difficult to have had true abuse in a relationship and become two new people so that you yeah. don't fall back on something that you did as an abuser and the other person doesn't fall back into playing a, 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 you know, the abusee role. But people have done things when they were in immature, when they didn't know any better, and right. they've learned and they've come out of you know, being abusive because they know that, that that's not right. But if you find yourself in that kind of relationship right now, that is not love. Right. So that's another example of us sometimes confusing any um, companionship, and we do it with strangers <laughs> when we're even on social media and stuff like that. We confuse any kind of attention for love. And we have to say, um, we have to be mindful that everything is not love. I think we, we wrote about this a little while ago that we overuse that word. And I use right. it a lot because I like love. You know, I love love right. <laughs> to, to use the word, to overuse the word. But I say it all the time, like, I love this food. Bianca, all I right. love this music. Peace I food. love this trip. I love, you know, and... I know what I'm talking about, 
but it dilutes the meaning for others. So really just, again, getting creative with language. What do I mean when I say I love a meal versus I love my husband? It's one of the flat parts of English <laughs> is that I can say the word love, but obviously I'm talking about intimate love. The love that I have for my mom is not the same as my husband. It's not the same as my children. And those are people. So let alone when we start to say all of the other things. So it's really important for us to know that these seven areas that we just gave, that we hear a lot in our individual sessions, are reasons why people are still kind of hanging in there even though they're experiencing this and they know that it's not love i would say the question that i ask a lot is um do you do you love this person and depending on how long the pause is <laughs> i say no you don't or yes you do so when you love someone, sometimes you're, you're sticking through abuse, you're sticking through no purpose, you're sticking through stagnation, and it's really only hurting you because you don't have the opportunity to share who you really are and your character is not being refined and you feel that. So in, a, a, in order to even save yourself, you know, just to save your own life, you will do something that is outside of who you need to be. So either ending a relationship that could Vaughan be good, Jackson or turning into meeting abuse with another kind of abuse. And that's not who you're Peace. meant to be. Indigenous so the best thing man. is to acknowledge which one of these things could have been in your relationship and to look to heal it, which if you want to talk about something individual, you can reach us at um, the bit.ly link slash and then soulmate strategy session, capital S, capital M, capital S. Mm -hmm. and capital S. So mm -hmm. bit.ly soulmate strategy session, or you can join us to find out what love is and get your heart work at bit.ly slash black love school. Thank you. Peace, queen. Peace. So, so that's it. Um, you know, Those were the seven I, I, things. I, I just want to share um, two client stories. Um, this weekend, I actually took on a white gentleman who had suffered a lot of abuse and he had been hounding me wanting some art and science of black love culture. Um, and um, very, very interesting story that he had about being sexually abused and assaulted by a family member and his sister. I saw uh, Sister Tonya Buck earlier. I don't know if she's still there, but the visionary that brought the um, the first annual sexual assault awareness walk to Trenton. Um, I was happy to be a part of that and the other stuff that she's got going on. But it's that that conversation is very profound. But without going into all the details, um, he just basically had been abused for several years, found out that his sister had also been abused for several years by the same family member and then had had enough, decided that he was going to kill the family member um, tracked him down somewhere, shoved the gun down his mouth, but couldn't pull the trigger. Um, a little bit later, the family member hit a um, telephone pole and the, the telephone pole fell on the car. And then the car caught on fire and the, the family member burned up. So he was lamenting about, you know, feeling guilty about that. And then he went to tell his mother and finally tell her um, what had happened to him. This is now, he's an adult now, but this is about, I guess he's in his late teens when he finally told that him and his sister had been abused by a family member. And the mother told him that she had actually been sexually molested by her mother and her father because she was an adopted child. It was a very, very deep, um, session that we had and um so he was using alcohol to cope and um you know so he was looking for some help from me and um we were able to you know you know do some good work um now he's asking me if i would be willing to work with his mother and um you know i have to see uh you know i, I would be interested to meet her <clears throat> and talk with her um, um then i also had a young Indian sister um, who was asking me, beautiful sister, asking me about what is wrong with her because she loves a man who beats her up and she knows that 
something is wrong because he verbally attacked her um, for the first time in front of her family the past weekend. And she is conflicted about what to do. And so I'm saying that to say that it's a lot of real issues out here for a lot of us across even racial lines. And we as the parent people of humanity have to take our role. In order to take our role as the parents of humanity, we have to be in our culture and we have to have community. Um, we can't do this by ourselves. And, you know, watching little videos on Facebook and things like that is cool, but it's not the actual work. And I don't ever want you all to be confused about that. Um, you need real instruction. And so that's what we're offering at the Black Love School. We're offering an opportunity this introductory year. If you are black, brown, and you want to be better at relationships, or there is something that you know that you did not learn about relationships, be it communication, conflict resolution, whatever it is, I am telling you, and I'm being immodest. I mean, it's a lot. It's, it's, sex, it's a lot of we stuff. Didn't sex, learn. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, it, it, it's endless. We Even have how to how to really harmonize and compliment. Like so, so we say things like you should be complimenting. Right. You should harmonize, but we don't know how to do that. Right. We say you need to have um, high vibration sex, but most of us accidentally find out how to have sex right. or we're finding out from pornography you right. know from our again our peers not someone ushering us into it based on experience right. <laughs> and perspective but just you know movies peers pornography pressure peer pressure you know so there's so many things that cause us grief and it's an area that we really just don't get um, counsel in so just not even regular counseling but preparation foundational understanding you can go to do anything and look for a guide, right? So if you right. want better finances, if you want to start a business, if you want to be fit, if you want to buy a house, you know, there's like a lot of times we look for what is the protocol? What do I need to know before I take this step? And I think because we have romanticized <laughs> love, we have a fairy tale idea of um, what's going to happen. We think because I think I'm loving, we're not really even sure of a definition of love. Again, like we said, it's just overused. Because I think I love, that means everything is going to work. And we get frustrated when it doesn't work. And we get frustrated when we, d we feel a lack of skill. And I think it's, we feel a certain level of embarrassment because it is not like money. It is not like we feel like any, I know a lot of times when I counsel people, when I work with women, we easily say what we need, what we don't know in a lot of categories. And I see a lot of women are saying, I don't know this in relationships, but we still keep so much hidden because we're embarrassed that we stayed in it when we weren't in love. We're embarrassed about um, being in an abusive relationship and we don't necessarily have the right lens to know what to draw and expect but you are really here for a divine purpose so it's really just about letting it out yes it's not so much that you have to really put in but it's just reframing your uh, right. filter right. what are you going to really move from what is your cultural lens and then how do you filter all the stuff that's coming from the outside through that in order to have the best happiest life and, and our relationships are the biggest part of our life Right. It's what causes us the most stress <laughs> and the most happiness. And all of our successes, we typically want to share it with someone. If you won the lottery, if you got a new job, if you bought a house, the first things that we do when everything is going well is invite others in to celebrate. That's the community. Right. right. We, need, we, we definitely need community, y'all. And, you know, the world is really looking for black people to take their role as the mothers and fathers of civilization and you can't do that using someone else's mm -hmm. culture. You know, um, the, the white gentleman that I talked about um, earlier, the reason that he's, he was so bullish about um, coming to the Acoma House Initiative is because he, he knew instinctively that black culture would offer something that no one else is, mm -hmm. is offering. And he was saying that no one else is saying what we're saying. And... We worked for about 45 minutes, he said, was able to make more breakthroughs 
in terms of his reframing and understanding his position and some of the things he should be looking to do than he said in years of therapy. So I'm just saying that as black people, we got to stop playing with our own heart and our own mind. Here is an opportunity that I've been out here for 25 years and I've never seen this. So the Black Love School, this introductory year, this first year is $42. And you come in, you'll be grandfathered in if you stay beyond that. But it's not always going to be that. Um, this is an opportunity for you to learn the things that you, even if you just sit back in a cut and listen. And listen to what is going on. Um, listen to what we're sharing. And then really listen to the live call. So the structure is going to be the first week we're going to have a pre-recorded class with heart work and we'll be working on a specific subject then week two we would have a live call with the community discussing the heart work and the challenges of it and what we're learning what we're discovering about ourselves and our mates and our families and then week three a new class week four um a live call. There'll be supports. There'll be guests coming in. It's going to be a community. It's an opportunity for you to get all of those things that Nawasha was talking about, as well as the things that you know in your heart and mind that you need. You saw some stuff in your family. Your parents did the best that they can, even with their own limitations. But you can't love by yourself. You can't be successful in a relationship because you're just not going to do what you saw or, you know, it's nobody's business and all of these other fallacious things that we're telling ourselves. You need a community of people who have been successful who are or who are striving to be successful in relationships. And we're going to be exchanging ideas. And this is the best offer that we can give, that we can humanly give to you. So I want to say this before I close. All of y'all men who be calling me, if y'all don't sign up for this school, all this free love that I give you, the door is closing on that. I am, I am saying to you, I cannot, I cannot stop what I'm doing and give you a free hour and a half or whatever, whatever, when there's an opportunity for something that is a nominal fee for you to do. This is the this is your this is less than your monthly haircut. Um, if you can't invest in your relationships, bro, I don't got nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? I I really don't have nothing for you. If you can't invest in your relationships with self, relationships with your culture, relationships with your black woman, your children, and your brothers. You can. I don't, so, I don't know what to you tell can. you. So, and so, really, we just need to recognize that relationships are so important. That's really what we have to say. But I love is, you, though. What is your idea of love? For you, what is your definition of love? And then do you have it in your life? <laughs> if you don't have it in your life, you're missing a skill that would draw it to you. And that's really, you know, that's we're meant to have community. We're meant to know love. And if you're not experiencing it, then it's something that you can um, put away because it's something that you Tyler added on. Desiree. It's not, it's not your true self. What's up, young brother? So you want to be able to get rid of whatever you've added on from this culture and this pressure in order to be your true self and draw the things that are important. When it's all said and done, you're not going to wish that you worked <laughs> another day. You're not going to wish you had some more of something that you can't take with you. You're going to want to know that your heart was good, your relationships were good, and you were happy. So that's it. The Black Love School is coming, opens this week. Let's get busy. Looking forward to seeing all of you there, all of your questions, all of your, you know, anything that you want to know, please reach out to us um, so we yeah, can give you the details. Inbox. And um, we're just looking forward to, to, to rocking with y'all, y'all. This is important. This is this is what we need. All success is the result of successful relationships. And you can't be successful in relationships just because you really, really want to. You need some training. And the Black Love School is the answer. So, as always, we greet you in peace. And we say, Nia Akoma. Let's rock.